today I'm going to show you how to make Indian fried rice, which you'll find in the grain section of the Spice Box cookery book. Fried rice is often on the menus of restaurants that you find when you're kind of you know, traveling along a motorway and there's a restaurant on the side of the motorway, they often have incredible food and I usually order fried rice when I'm there. So this recipe is inspired by that and it's also a really good way to use up any leftover cold rice that you might have lying around. Also a good way to use up any veg that you've got lying around your fridge. So I've had a look in my fridge. I've got quite a sad looking carrot, a red pepper, some broccoli. That's gonna be enough veg. I might chuck some frozen peas in there at the end. It's really flexible and adaptable. So just feel free to mix it up and use what veg you've got to hand. I'm gonna use sesame oil. I'm gonna put some sesame oil into a hot frying pan. A couple of tablespoons, just wanna coat the bottom. When the oil's nice and hot, you can add the whole spices. So here I've got cumin seeds, mustard seeds, and some cloves. I find that cloves go really well with rice dishes. I often put cloves into water when I'm boiling rice. Again, they're that great kind of Chinese Indian fusion spice because they can be found quite commonly in, in both cuisines. Oh. When the spices are golden and they're beginning to pop a bit and smelling delicious, you're ready to add in the next aromatics. I am gonna use fresh curry leaves, which are one of my most favorite ingredients to cook with. I find them such a treat to have because they're quite hard to find, so don't worry if you can't find them. But if you do live near an Indian store, shout out to my local Taj Foods. Um, definitely buy them because they'll just take your cooking to a whole new level. So these go always into hot oil. You want to fry them so they go nice and crispy. If you can't find fresh curry leaves, you can always swap them out for bay leaves. That's quite a good substitute. When you're putting curry leaves into a frying pan, don't throw away the stalk because there's loads of flavor in this. Just throw it into the hot oil, let it fry, and just take it out before you serve your dish. Now the curry leaves are turning delicious and crispy. I'm gonna go in with two green chilies and these I mainly want for the flavour rather than the heat. So I'm just going to slip them down the middle and that's going to mean that the seeds aren't really agitated and loosened so it will stay nice and mild. And the last spice I'm going to add is some dry red chilli flakes. They're going to bring a bit more heat and also a slightly different flavour profile from the green chilies. They're a bit nuttier and sweeter and they're so good when fried in oil like this. Spices are fried, now it's time to add sliced white onion which you can film me slicing if you want, but I'm sure you know how to slice an onion by now. Watch the other Spice Box YouTube recipe videos because I talk a lot about slicing onions in them. I'm chopping these into half moons, which is gonna add a knife. Ah, there we go. You can tell. So close. That's what happens when you make me talk and slice onions. Oh, sorry. It's your fault. Sorry, you're a I like to stop and then I talk and then I slice. The onions are going in the pan. You will know by now, if you are a loyal follower of the Spice Box YouTube channel, I add a pinch of salt. It draws out the moisture, and we're looking for really sweet caramelized onions with this recipe. It's quite simple, so we want a lot of flavor coming from the onions, and the salt is gonna be an essential step in getting that flavor. 10 minutes minimum for your onions. The longer the better. They just need time. They need slow, low heat, because that's how they become sweet. Otherwise, they'll just get burnt quickly. They'll become bitter. They won't go soft and gooey. So you want to just take your time, be patient, make a cup of tea, do your washing up, fill me washing up so that I look relatable and like an honest, honorable woman. You want all the veg to cook at the same time, pretty quickly, so just cut everything nice and thin. With the carrot, because I want it to cook super quickly, I'm just gonna peel it with a veg peeler. You'll get these nice ribbons. Usually, I tell people to grate garlic because it's a really good way of releasing flavor and it's quick. But for this recipe, we're gonna slice the garlic. 
And that's purely because I just think it's gonna add some nice, crispy, garlicky texture to the fried rice. The onions are nice and soft now. I'm gonna go in with my six cloves of sliced garlic. I'm gonna add the broccoli now because that's gonna take the longest to cook. So it's gonna cook out with the garlic. The broccoli is looking a darker shade of green, which means it's on its way to being cooked. So it's time to add the rest of the veg. So the veg is all cooked down now. It's reduced in size and it's ready for me to add the cooked rice. You can actually use any cooked grain that you've got to hand. This would work equally as well with quinoa or pearl barley. I often make stir fries with a mix of just grains I've got lying around my cupboards. Some people are a bit nervous about using leftover rice. Rice can grow bacteria, and I definitely wouldn't recommend leaving your rice for more than three days or reheating it multiple times. But if you've just cooked it once, you've chilled it down quickly, it's gonna be absolutely fine for the next two days to use. Spices. Spice time. About a teaspoon of turmeric which is gonna add an incredible color to the rice. And also some garam masala, which has the most incredible combination of like pepper, cinnamon, there's some more clove in there. It's quite earthy, but it's also got a fragrance to it that's just gonna round off this dish beautifully. Just before I take the rice off the heat, I'm gonna stir through some chopped coriander and also some toasted cashews. I'm also going to garnish with these at the end, so you don't need too much, but I just want to mix them through so that there's some texture throughout the whole of the rice. I like to plate this up with some chopped spring onion and then some more toasted cashews and also finish everything off with a wedge of lime. That felt like I was going to say something else. There's just so much flavour. All the spices are coming through. Really get that punch of clove. It's fresh, it's got a good chilli kick to it. It's just the perfect dish to use up any veg you've got lying around the bottom of your fridge. I can't wait for you guys to give it a try. Let me know what you think and enjoy. Enjoy, that was quite cheesy.